Hello everybody, my name is Radovan Bast and in this short video I, will, I would like to share my approach to teaching and to lesson development and to lesson preparation within the co refinery project. And my teaching approach really changed um, 180 degrees after taking the Carpentries instructor training before I was really using mainly slides, 45 minute lesson blocks, separate exercise sessions. But after the Carpentries instructor training, I have really embraced uh, the interaction and exercises and, uh, and demos and typologs and making typos and fixing mistakes together. So the goals, the, for me, the goal of a successful lesson is to spark curiosity, both for the novices and for the more experienced uh, participants. And that is not easy. So keeping both the novices and the experts engaged during a lesson can be difficult. But uh, I think that offering optional exercises uh, seems to be a good uh, compromise. I like to start lessons with a question because it makes people look up from their browsers and their computers. And this question is then discussed live if we are in an in-person workshop or asynchronously in uh, using a shared document. And then we discuss our findings. And for me, it is a good sign if there are many questions. And I like to encourage questions by, by asking questions to the, to the learners. But also try, I'm trying not to go too much into the rabbit hole when we get questions which maybe only where only the experts would appreciate the answer. I try to avoid jargon and war stories from the professional developer's perspective or the business world. So like words like, I try to avoid words like customer, production, shipping, user stories, some of the agile jargon because I think many researchers would not really relate to these terms. I think that less and clear is better than more and unclear, obviously. Simple examples better than complicated examples. I have almost never gotten the feedback that something was too simple. So I'm also trying to, in my head, to repeat, to really avoid uh, using words like simply, just, easy. And if participants take home one or two messages from a lesson, this is for me success. How do I prepare uh, for teaching? I prepare lessons by reading the instructor guide and I go normally through all the issues and all the pull requests. And often I take the lesson preparation as an opportunity to, to really work through uh, all the repository issues. And I might, I may not have the time to solve all the issues, but at least I don't want to be surprised by problems which are known. And I learn the material up to the point where I know precisely what comes next. Not really, I'm not learning bullet point by heart, but I want to not be surprised by the next episode or, or the next figure. And this allows me to skip um, lessons or episodes uh, if I'm running out of time and to really distill the essence. And I try not to deviate from the script. If I do, I want to, I, I'm trying to be very explicit about it. And a great exercise I can recommend uh, everybody is to watch a tutorial for a new programming language or, um, or a new tool which you have never used before. And it can feel very overwhelming and fast to get all these new concepts and tools thrown at yourself. And this can really prepare me for how participants might feel in, in my lesson. So my approach to teaching itself, I find it really helpful if there is somebody else in the room, either physically or virtually, who helps me detecting when I go too fast or when I become too confusing. I like when two instructors complement each other during a lesson, but when doing that, 
uh, to others. So when I'm giving tips to somebody else teaching, I'm also often worried to not interrupt the flow and timing too much. And a mistake I, I have done often uh, is uh, myself typing too fast. And I force, force myself in, in my mind to, to really slow down. Uh, how do I create lesson material? I, these days, I start backwards. I start with the lesson outcomes. I, I really start writing down what I would like the learners to know at the end of the lesson, either to know or understand or be able to apply. And I also admit that I have not, uh, I have learned this late. Uh, uh, I have earlier, I have often tried to show as many cool things as possible in the amount of time that we have. But the effect was, I think, that the learning outcomes were not very clear to me and not to the learners. And it's, and the lessons were possibly not very helpful. And these days I really try to start with the take home messages and the learning outcomes. I think that small things can have a big effect. Uh, I think it's often the small things that really decide about the success of a lesson. It's about clear communication of what, what we will discuss and what we will skip. And that is okay to skip. It's about clear communication of what is a demo, what is a type along, what is an exercise, when is a break, or to really introduce pauses and questions, many questions, and really insisting on breaks. We really need br breaks during the, during the workshops. Uh, communicating also that mistakes and problems are expected. We expect them and then we will solve them together. So instead of solving it very quickly myself, we try to solve these problems together. And finally, uh, a few words about the Code Refinery project itself. What I really enjoy most about working in the, with the Code Refinery team are the ideas and the creativity of my colleagues. I learned so much from them at each workshop and I learned, I learned from the participants and it's, it's really great fun to teach and great fun to learn and, and learning never stops and that's wonderful. And I very much look forward to uh, teaching with you. Thanks for listening. <laughs>